Midsummer, a classic Swedish holiday with pickled herring, dancing around maples and human sacrifice. Hi guys, welcome back if you're new. My name is Maya, I eat tomatoes. If you're old, welcome to a new video. So today we're going to be talking about two different kinds of midsummer. So we're talking about midsummer, the classic traditional Swedish holiday, and we're talking about midsummer, the 2019 Ari Aster movie with Florence Pugh. Let's get one thing straight. So midsummer is how you say it in Swedish and that would translate to Midsummer in English, that's how you say it, but the movie is called Midsommar, spelled in the Swedish way, so I won't say Midsommar, but mid is so confusing. But we're doing this, when I say Midsommar, I'm referring to the movie, when I say Midsommar, I'm referring to the holiday, okay? Since I've basically grown up with this holiday, I know a bunch about it, and it's just like kind of Everybody in Sweden knows about this holiday. It's nothing weird. So when I saw the movie, I was like, whoa, that's not how I remember it. <laughs> so what we're doing today, we're going to be talking through the movie, basically pointing out stuff that are true and stuff you'd actually see in a typical tr Swedish midsummer celebration and stuff that are less true. We're also going to be tasting like a s traditional Swedish midsummer spread of food. So I'm going to talk you through the Swedish classics of food, what you see, some variations, and uh, I'm also talking about the movie. So yeah, hang with me. Let's go. Okay, so first things first, I feel like I should just explain like what Midsummer is for like the typical Swedes. So way back when I think it had some religious, some Christian, um, history behind it but the typical Swede in 2022 I don't think thinks about the religious ties you think about the holiday because I'd say midsummer is up there with Christmas and like how Swedes celebrate we go hard so typically for midsummer you'll be with your friends or your family or both or whatever uh, you're usually outside if you can be if the weather allows uh, you have you eat food, you do the traditional uh, midsummer lunch, or some will do it for dinner. You maybe do a barbecue too. Uh, if you do like the traditional celebration, usually people with kids will do that, not so much like the adult parties. But then you do a maypole and you dance around it and sing songs. But the like big tradition is really you have a big party. And you drink a lot of alcohol, you have nice food, just hang out. It's a really good time. Almost everybody is off on midsummer. Like more stores will be closed on midsummer than Christmas Eve. Uh, and midsummer is always in June. Uh, before, I think historically, it was always on a certain day, but now it's like the third of the third Friday, it's, I don't know how they counted that, but it can vary a bit, but it's always a Friday that you celebrate on, uh, because in Sweden, we always celebrate on the eve and not the day. Um, like, I feel like most countries usually celebrate day, like Christmas day, but we celebrate Christmas Eve. So we also celebrate Midsummer Eve. But also why, like the whole point of Midsummer is it's one of the brightest periods of the year. So you can barely tell like the difference between day and night because it's so bright, especially in the northern of Sweden, like you can't see difference and you're going to notice that in the movie. But yeah, let's start. Oh, I almost dipped my dress into the potatoes, but let's start with what I almost think is like the most traditional thing that most people will see on the Swedish midsummer table. So, for those of you, some of you might just look at this and be like, "Why? it's a potato. And I'm like, yeah, it's a potato. In Sweden, we eat a lot of potatoes, generally, I'd say. Uh, but for midsummer, preferably you get it directly out of the ground. It's these mini delicatessen potatoes. They're a bit smaller than your normal ones. Mm. And they're really tasty. They're very fresh. 
really nice and there's a bunch of ways you could do them i say the most classic way is just boiling them that's what i did i boiled them and then put a bit of butter on when they were done but people also do like potato salads um or more maybe do like a fancy one with some uh, caviar on top or make it a bit fancy but i'd say potatoes you're fine on most midsummer tables so let's i'm hungry so i'm gonna Eat myself a potato. This is a potato, it's delicious. Okay, so let's get to the movie. I've got my little notes here. Let's see. You see this like winter landscape with lots of trees and stuff, and you might be like, okay, so what? But, because this is supposed to be where Danny's family is living, I believe, uh, in the movie. But what kind of struck me was that this really looks like how Sweden looks like in the winter. Because if you don't know, Sweden has like, it's a lot of snow, at least in North, a lot of snow. Uh, and very like harsh winters. And then in the summer we have really nice summers. But we definitely have seasonality. So I saw that and it's really dark and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's a good contrast. It looks like it could have been in Sweden, but they're not. They're in America, but still, whatever. The movie starts with Danny stressing about her family. Her sister sent her some like weird text and we learn that her sister is bipolar and she's worried because her sister won't answer her phone and she is worried something happened. Uh, and her boyfriend sucks. I think I wrote her boyfriend sucks like 20 times in this thing. He sucks. We're just getting that out of the way now. And you know I hate him. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, so yeah, it's a really creepy murder-suicide scene. Uh, time goes by and we find out that Pelle, which is the boyfriend's friend, who's the Swede, uh, is from Helsingland, which is a part of Sweden, it's a region in Sweden. So we get to know that. And that is actually a place that you can go to and it's not as creepy as the movie makes it out to be. <laughs> Heads up. Um, uh, we also found out that they're going June to Ju July, they don't really say any dates and that also is true as I said, midsummer is typically in the end of June. I also think it's weird because they keep on saying like, oh we're going to Helsingland and I'm like, I think that's kind of weird. I don't feel like anybody speaks like that in Sweden, we say to a town or like I'm going... No, you wouldn't even say that, I feel like you do it to specific places but i feel like most people refer to town names i don't know i just reacted to this i was like why would you say that because it's like a big region that doesn't say you anything but okay sure whatever also peddler shows like some pictures of like oh this is how it usually is and that actually looks like it would be from a swedish traditional midsummer so it's like oh that looks correct <laughs> i wouldn't react to that also, when they're on the plane, the pilot speaks Swedish and uh, he actually sounds like Swede, which I also appreciate because I know in a lot of TV shows and series, they will do like, oh, this is Swedish. And then you can really hear that that person is not Swedish. It is not a language they're comfortable. It's more like they've read the script and they're talking so poorly that it's like barely understandable as Swedish. But I'm happy that that was actual Swedish, if you listen to the pilot on the plane. Uh, the pilot also says it's 15 degrees Celsius, which is like, yeah, that sounds pretty reasonable like today. We're one week off uh, midsummer today, by the way. Um, no, six days off. Seven days, no, I can't count. Five days off when you watch this. Um, and right now it's 18 degrees, so uh, for a lot of people that's maybe a bit cold, but I mean, it's kind of warm. People will wear like shorts and dresses and skirts and stuff for that weather. But uh, yeah, we're used to having it kind of cold. <laughs> uh, moving on. One thing I just thought was kind of weird, they're driving a Renault and I was like, if they really wanted to lean into the whole Swedish thing, they would be driving a Volvo. Just saying, just me being very picky. Uh, they drive past a sign, like the, uh, I think the, scene is like upside down and you can see like a big banner on the sign it literally says stop mass immigration to Helsingland which 
I mean, it's kind of interesting because they're coming there as tourists, I guess, so not immigration, but it kind of, I thought it was just interesting that it was placed there. Good, kind of warns you that foreigners are not welcome necessarily. Anyway, when uh, the group gets to the like big planes really and they meet up with the others, uh, one of Pelle's friends or family, whatever, uh, says, uh, what does he say? He, ref he says, happy uh, Johannes Döparensdag, which is the like old, I think, Christian name for Midsummer. I have never heard anybody refer to this nowadays, but that is true, what it was called from the start. But it's not common at all, but that kind of gives you a vibe that, hmm, something is maybe a bit culty here because they're using the religious name and not the like common. Let's take this moment and start with kind of like the starter foods because they just arrived. I feel like that's a good time. So uh, as I said, we've already had the potatoes, but uh, usually for like midsummer lunch, you do like a massive buffet and everybody choose. And most people would do like one plate that's maybe a starter, one plate with cold stuff and one plate with warm stuff. And I just got a few of everything. I mean, there's so many variations of what you can do. There's no like super hard, this is exactly what you eat. But since it's a buffet, first we're going with our traditional, this is so basic, knäckebröd. It's a thin hard bread, very traditional in Sweden. You have it like, it's super common. I eat this for breakfast <laughs> every day. I usually find it at restaurants, but it's almost always on a midsummer buffet. Uh, and you usually have it with butter and some kind of cheese that's been stored for a while, aged cheese. Uh, and maybe the most traditional cheese is a type called Vesterbottenost, which is only made in Vesterbotten. It's one of those protected names, um, foods. <laughs> uh, and it's it got a very special taste. I really don't know how to explain it. You kind of have to try it, but it's really tasty. And a lot of people will also do a pie after this cheese that's really good and I wanted to get one because usually you can buy them at the stores but since I'm like one week before midsummer they're not selling them anywhere but let's get some of this some cheese mm. it's really good like this cheese packs a punch and for my second like appetizer dish. It's a more modern one, I'd say. This is Leirum chips, which is crisps. I choose salt and vinegar because the Brit and me just had to come out and say hello, I guess. But I think most common you just do like plain salt. And then there's caviar from Leia. What is that called in English? Not sure. I'm gonna put it Summer, it's a specific fish and I feel like this is the most popular and common um, caviar in Sweden. We have like the really fancy stuff, it's from Kalix up north and it's like the expensive, the good stuff. And it, this is quite common dish, you can get it at restaurants and it's been more and more trendy the past few years. So people have been making them at home. But anyway, so crisps. We have um, the caviar, we have sour cream and some red onions. People also do uh, chives instead of red onions or both. But this is like, I would say the classic one. And uh, it's freaking delicious. Let's move on with the movie, okay? So, uh, one thing to point out, there's a bunch of names in this movie from the people in this community. Uh, they're called Pelle, Ingmar, Odd, Inga, Ilva, Maja, Jan, Ruben, Siv, Ulf and Torbjörn. All of these are Swedish names, uh, but I'd say most of them are more common in an older generation. They're not as common for younger people, but Maja is the Swedish version of Maja. So that's my name in Swedish, <laughs> but it has a different spelling. I'd say Pelle is maybe more common for younger people too. 
anime names. Uh, as you see in the movie, they like when a person dies, a new baby gets their name. And I feel like that kind of happens in Sweden. Like names go in circles, don't they? So now like all the old people names are coming to like the newborn babies. It's kind of weird, but kind of cute too. But yeah, those are the names that they use and they are correct. Then apparently it's gone from day one to day two, but they haven't noticed it's become dark. That's what I said. This is the brightest time of the year and if you're in the right place in Sweden, you have something that's called Midnight Sun. Uh, and it's basically like, it's sun 24 seven. You cannot tell what time it is if you don't have a clock, really. It's really cool in a way and kind of creepy, but you see this throughout the whole movie. It never gets dark. So that's kind of how it is. Like it's really bright this time of year, but that also means that in the winter, it's really, really dark. Next up, they mentioned that Sweden has a tick problem. And this is also true. Uh, both TBE, I'm not sure if that's what it's called in English, but also Borrelia is diseases that you can get from ticks. So beware, get vaccinated if you can and uh, watch out for the ticks because they suck, literally. When they arrive to the site, they get handed these little like um, straws, I guess, with wild strawberries on it. And that's like a classic thing you do as a kid. You get your wild strawberries, put them on a straw, they look pretty, everyone's happy. I don't know, it's like, it's just one of those things that's like classic. Uh, it also appears that this community or this place is called Hoga. Uh, and that kind of has some significance because there's a song called Hoga Låten which is about like the devil and people dancing until they die basically and they become like possessed. Uh, yeah, it's great. But it's kind of what this... There's some stuff in this movie that kind of ties into that which is kind of fun. But yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a weird song, <laughs> it's intense, but that's what this place is named after. But there's no actual real place in Sweden called Hoga, so don't you worry, we're not gonna take you there. If we're looking at the people's clothes, they are wearing like these linen dresses. I can't say they specifically uh, look like something you'd see in Sweden. Some people will wear uh, the like traditional folk direct, like the um, kind of old time clothes for parties and different events. Uh, I can put a picture of them here. They're not really the same, but I can understand if that's kind of what's based on. Uh, but generally people will wear like a nice summery dress or a skirt and guys would do like linen shirts and shorts or trousers and it's kind of casual formal. It kind of depends on the but like this, what I'm wearing today, a linen little skirt, I'd say is pretty traditional midsummer. Usually people do light clothes and stuff, light collars and stuff like that because it's summer. Nothing too crazy there. But then we have the flower crowns. The flower crowns are a classic. Uh, and either you can like buy one at a florist or you can make one yourself either by flowers you buy or if you pick them. Uh, that's up to you. I've made my own, that's why it's a bit wonky, but it does the trick. It's really pretty and I like seeing people walk around with this. But that's like definitely a traditional thing. Not everybody does it, but like at least when you're a kid, it's kind of fun to do. And you can see them representing it there too. Also, they have the May pole. It's a big pole or like a cross and then in the cross parts, there's two circles. This is the main pole that people will dance around and they'll cover it in like flowers and green leaves and stuff and it's very midsummer symbol. The first ceremony when they're just like breathing and making sounds to each other, not quite sure what's happening at all, but good for them. Oh yeah, and then they kind of like dance around and they do like shoppies, like sounds and you're like, what's happening? That's not common practice, okay? Just putting it out there. We don't do that. Also, they refer to a game later on called Floor Naren, Skin the Fool. That is not a real thing. It's not. That's made up. 
then later on we get to see this like tapestry that kind of shows a story of a girl falling in love with a guy and uh, eventually baking a sort of pie and drink and there's some uh, here's the thing in the beginning of that story there's some truth that is stuff that is Swedish tradition and then it kind of goes crazy but the beginning is that uh, typically girls but I guess why wouldn't it work for guys too or non-binary whoever you are uh, if you uh, so it kind of differs from the folk tale I guess but I you should pick seven or nine I've seen both so I'm not sure which one is the actual one but seven or nine different flowers you're supposed to pick them and then put them under your pillow and then when you sleep you're gonna dream of the person um, like you're, you're gonna dream of your soulmate and that's like legend that's also like a thing you did when you was a kid um, but yeah that's true the whole baking a pubic hair pie and putting period blood in someone's drink not so much I have never heard that <laughs> uh, so yeah the flower things that's true other things not so much also like somebody refers like oh the kids are watching Austin Powers somewhere and I'm like this place does not seem like a place that has any digital anything how are they watching Austin Powers like are, do they just have like a laptop with Netflix and some Wi-Fi like what uh, okay next up is the whole thing with the Etterstupa and I remember being taught this in school like as a kid we talked about this that like an Etterstupa was the thing that medieval time the elders would be pushed off a cliff to die because they shouldn't burden the society uh, but I did some research on this all the scientists are kind of like on the same page this didn't happen it's a myth it's there's no like actual documented stuff that this would have happened it's only been spoken about as a myth as a folk tale but like most people no this is not true so there eating later on at the table and they seem they have the small glasses with snaps and snaps is a classic midsummer alcoholic drink that people drink i would if i drank i don't so i don't have anything to show you but it's flavored very strong alcohol that people drink but otherwise on the table i couldn't really see a lot of of the classic food like they had i wrote here they have potatoes they have knäckebröd cheese maybe eggs but otherwise it was really hard to identify what they actually were eating uh, so nothing fun there but let's move on to one of the main plates so it's our warm plate it's probably not that warm anymore sadly <laughs> because i've been talking uh, but we have we have our classic swedish meatballs i feel like meatballs are such a classic part of Swedish culture like we love our meatballs we eat them in like all celebrations this is kind of like the kids alternative to if they don't like the stuff that's coming next uh, but yeah some people make their own some people will buy them ready because the ready ones are pretty good too also we have Prinskorv which means Prince sausage probably because it's a small sausage I think the English word would be a cocktail sausage but it has a specific taste and also this is like meatballs and these sausages are like on all the bigger holiday tables usually as like the kid alternative but I like them they're delicious we also have some salmon smoked salmon it's falling again okay we're just gonna leave it right now but we have smoked salmon and then we also have skagenröra and I feel like at this point I should just shut up about skagenröra and like watch some of my other videos where I eat it I love it it's with shrimp it's delicious what's not to like in the sweet in the sleeping pot the sleeping house <laughs> the place where they sleep they have these mats uh, that are called trasmattor and 
that's such like classic Swedish tab on the floor. Trisha, show you. Here's a picture or something. Uh, they're very like traditional Swedish mats. So I was like, hey, that's cool. That's fun to see. I like that. I know this is kind of part of it too, that with it being bright all the time, it's hard to keep track of what day it is. But the whole thing that got me confused is like, people celebrate Midsummer one day. Like you celebrate Midsummer Eve on the Friday, then you're kind of done. You hang over on the Saturday, like that's it. But they just keep on going and I'm like, what day is the actual celebration? What day did they get there? I'm so confused. Pelle sees that the girl, like I remember her name, is kind of hitting or like has a crush on Danny's boyfriend. That I can't remember his name either. I remember Pelle and Danny. <laughs> uh, anyway, and he's like, oh, it seems like she's got a crush on you. And he's like, oh, huh. and he's like, oh, she turned bitsmindig last year, whatever. Uh, sadly, this is actually a term that is used and it's kind of creepy because it actually means your bix means pants and mundig is like mature or of age so it means when you're 15 in Sweden you're bix mundig and that means you can have sex with adults basically and it's you're not classified as a child in a sexual manner kind of it's weird, it's kind of, I'm, the more I think about it, the more the term is really creepy. Like I understand it has, there has to be an age at, in a legal matter, but the term Bixmundig is disgusting. I said it. Also, I was like, did she choose Danny's boyfriend because he also has red hair? Cause I was like, they're racist. And maybe like, Maybe they want the red hair gene left in their population. I feel like that could be a thing. I don't know, I just felt it was weird that they both had red hair. Maybe I'm overthinking this, but yeah. We see Chidi uh, trying to steal these, this like holy book or he's taking pictures or whatever. And then they come with this freaking Game of Thrones face stealing stuff and I just hate it so much. It's mm, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Do not like it. Nope. Then there's a scene at what I presume is the breakfast table. We don't really know what day it is, but Chidi... Also, I know his name is not Chidi, but in the, in the good place, his name is Chidi. Anyway, he was stealing that, and that was during the night, right? So it's the morning. Also, based on what they're eating, because I can see butter, and I can see callous caviar or caviar, I really don't care what you say. Uh, there's two different pronunciations. But, uh, and I, I couldn't see any like bread or anything, which was weird because like you wouldn't eat that on its own. Uh, but it was fun because Kallis caviar is a Swedish classic for the breakfast table or with like eggs or on a sandwich. I think it's disgusting, but some people like it. Then it's time for the dancing around the maple. So I guess this is the actual midsummer celebration. Uh, and Danny gets this tea. It kind of looks like dandelion tea, but it's definitely drugged. That is not an actual thing, <laughs> but next part kind of is. So it's time to dance around the maypole and everybody's wearing the flower crowns so the only women don women dancing that's not really true in reality both men women children elders whoever wants to dance gets to dance and there's like a bunch of traditional songs that goes with the dance and people will dance around the thing uh, and i'd say the probably most popular one the most common one is smogrodorna that means little frogs <laughs> and the song basically goes small frogs small frogs are funny to see small frogs to fr small frogs they're funny to see no ears no ears or tails do they have no ears no ears or tails tails do they have and then you go I don't know, is that supposed to be the sound that they do? But there's like a dance that goes with it that you go Hey, I don't know, it, everybody knows this uh, So yeah, that's the most common one But 
uh, I have not heard that anybody has crowned anyone as the flower queen or well, that's the tradition or anything like that. Do you remember I said before that we were talking about Håga Låten that the town or the community is named after? Kind of reference here because they're dancing until people like fall and faint and stuff. That's from the song. In the dancing scene when they're dancing like this one where they're like throwing each other forward, catapulting each other, that's really fun. Like we did that in PE in like grade 9 and it's really fun because it goes really quickly. I like that. <laughs> Just a side note, when Danny believes she's speaking Swedish, she is not. Just wanted to point that out. That was not Swedish, that was mumbo jumbo. If anybody thought it was. Why is it called May when we're celebrating in June? I do not know but sure. But they're eating this feast and like nothing I could see was traditional to midsummer in real life. So I was like, okay, disappointed. One thing although that they did have at the feast, that's kind of true. They said she needed to eat a pickled herring whole. Uh, I've never heard of that, but pickled herring is a big part of midsummer. So let's move on to our next one. Pickled herring is very traditional to midsummer. Uh, there's lots of different like flavorings. I got three different kinds, and you usually, I mean, all of this stuff you eat together, but it's definitely a part of it. So, the types I got is French onion pickled herring, uh, I got the mustard pickled herring, and I also got, I think it was called quagwood pickled herring. I don't know, but it's, it's like a mayonnaise based. It's kind of like skagen, but with herring. Uh, so here's the thing. I've never been a big fan of pickled herring, so I'm doing this for you. Uh, I might like it. I haven't tried it in a while, so let's try. I also got sour cream and some um, chopped up red onions, because it's kind of complimentary. So let's start with the French onion one. Mm. It actually wasn't that bad. Okay. Mm. It was almost kind of good. Oh, that's weird. Okay, let's do the mustard one, seal up seal. That one's even better. Okay, and finally, Quagwood sheep. Yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised. I did not think, am I an adult now? Is that what's happened? I've grown up. Mom, look at me now. <laughs> wow, my palette's maturing. That's cool. Okay, so I know herring isn't for everyone, but give it a try. I'm, I'm really surprised. <laughs> okay, uh, they're always drinking something that's kind of like light yellow-ish. So I'm thinking either that's like beer or it's like apple cider. I'm not sure, none of it feels very traditional. I feel like midsummer's only like traditional drinks are alcohol. <laughs> uh, so yeah, not quite sure what they're drinking. Uh, also, I pointed out, imagine having to dance for what felt like 14 hours and then they're like, now you have to carry this one. I'd be really pissed. They do like the Danny's holding like a fire. The Goblet of Fire, no. She's uh, holding like the Olympic stick. And the other girl is like, oh, and Danny should do it back. I think they're saying words, but I've literally known it. Because uh, they're like singing them. It's hard to understand but I, they're saying something and I was like it would be really funny if Danny was tone deaf and she just couldn't sing it back it's it's just some I would want that <laughs> okay moving on then it's the scene that I don't want to talk about but I just pointed out would it not be like really itchy to be laying on flowers and, like poke make you have a tulip up your butt just thought about that. The dresses they are wearing now are really cute and when they're all like grieving together, I think that's a really pretty scene and I like that. 
and the dresses are really cute. I want that dress. I just remembered that Maya is the that girl who says I can feel the child now and I'm just like God's sake why does my na namesake not understand how reproduction works for God's sake get a grip uh, also boyfriend Danny's boyfriend uh, runs out naked like into the grass and that you can kind of take that scene and it's kind of like a folk tale in Sweden too or like a myth or whatever that uh, uh, supposedly running around naked in the grass in if it's dewy like running around naked in the dew is supposed to be good for good health according to folk tales so you can kind of see something there i mean for him it might not work but yeah the yellow house i don't know if it has any significance to like something traditional but it reminds me of a Toblerone and I was like when did I have a Toblerone for the last time? Does Toblerone still exist? Where do you get a Toblerone? The actual questions. Oh yeah, the like uh, uh, the granen gives you help for no pain or something. That's apparently a U. Never heard of that, but that's what it says. It doesn't do shit. Yeah. Uh, then I my, I'm gonna just quote myself directly. I said, yeah, this is so up. Happy Midsummer. Um, <laughs> also, then I had a little add-on. In the end, when everybody's like crying and screaming, and Danny has her big like flower dress cape situation, and she's like walking to the side, it reminds me so much of the slug lady in Monsters Inc. <laughs> Like, tell me you don't see that. That, oh, that's so the same. But yeah, um, any significance to the actual human sacrifice or the dress or anything? No, not that I know. That's not something that Swedes do. The movie's done. Let's finish our spread with the best thing. Maybe the best thing. So first thing, Swedish strawberries is such a like unique, not maybe so unique, but it's like a must-have. Like every single uh, lecture I've had when they're talking about supply and demand talks about Swedish strawberries during midsummer because the price just goes whew, because there's only so many strawberries and everybody wants them on midsummer. So it's really I've been doing this for the past few weeks, looking what the price of Swedish strawberries but fluctuating and it, it slowly climbs up and if you're buying strawberries on midsummer it's gonna be crazy expensive uh, but I mean they're a fresh commodity like you need to buy them quite close to the actual date so yeah it sucks but it's what it is so anyway traditionally you do strawberries with cream, you could do it with ice cream, you could do it with milk, you could do it in a cake, but strawberries are always present on midsummer, seriously. So I did strawberries, they're just plain, there's no sugar or anything because they're that good. And then I have some ice cream. So yeah, let's give it a go. I love ice cream. Swedish strawberries are something else, seriously. Mm. Yum. Okay, let's, let's wrap this up. I love the movie Midsummer. I think it's really fun that somebody has done something with Swedish culture that's still kind of mainstream. Uh, I also like, like I usually don't like horror movies, but this one I can do because it's not dark. So I really enjoyed it. I love this movie. I love Florence Pugh. I kind of want to see more of Ari Aster's work, but I'm also terrified. We'll see. Uh, also for the midsummer food, this is just some of the selections you can do. I mean, everybody does it a little bit different, but this is like the general vibe for midsummer. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. I'm pleasantly surprised with the herring. Didn't think that's how it's gonna turn out, but more you know. So yeah, 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to do that. I make food videos every week. Uh, and yeah, that's it for this video. Happy Midsummer, guys. If you celebrate it, have a good time. Don't get too drunk. Bye. Oh my God, what? <laughs> I think it's a bit big. <laughs> Has this been like gliding down? <laughs> right. First, let's try to fix this. What is this doing? Oh my god. I'm gonna just carry on like this at this point. Uh, anime. Okay. Why? It's just getting worse and worse.